My next speaker has been a warrior for freedom, for Israel, and for the shared value systems that Israel and the United States both enjoy and respect individual rights, equality of rights under the law. Helen Friedman is singular, another, yes, Helen, yes, please, of course, is another brave, and when I say brave, what is the bravery? The bravery is anyone that takes up this issue is demonized, marginalized, rendered radioactive, destroyed. Your name, the one thing, the only thing that, in my opinion, that means anything in this world, who and what you are and what you stand for, is destroyed and smeared because you speak for freedom. And this woman is unwavering. And so I want to thank Helen for coming from far and, and agreeing to speak to us this afternoon. Helen? It's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be part of this uh, demonstration. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that um, we have to be here uh, to castigate uh, these people who are willing to and eager to squelch free speech here in America. Uh, we have to remind everybody this is not Islamistan, this is America, and we enjoy freedom of speech here, and we will speak out on every subject that we wish, and we will s stand on the streets of America with our flags and with our banners and signs and say the truth. Now, there is a cancer here in this society. Tragically, tragically, it is being promoted by the leadership in the country. The leadership, the White House, President Obama, the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, are unable to call a spade a spade. They're unable to say that there is jihad here in America. They're unable to call the Fort Hood killing uh, what it was uh, is an act of Islamic terrorism. They call it workplace violence. It was November of 2009 when Nidal Hassan, yelling Allah Akbar, having just gotten off the phone with his Al Qaeda friend, that Nidal Hassan went and killed 13 Americans and wounded 32 in a very, very, very clear act of Islamic terrorism. It was called workplace violence. The people who were wounded and the people who were killed are trying to be awarded, of course not the dead, but their representatives, the awarded the Purple Heart for their valor, for, for being killed in action. And they have not been given this Purple Heart, and it takes a congressional uh, action and all kinds of efforts and petitions and lawsuits to make this happen. The same year, prior to the November 2009 event, the same year, June 1st, 2009, there was a very, very tragic event that occurred that was also Islamic Jihad terrorism. A young boy, a young boy named Carlos Bledsoe, who had been brought up in Memphis, Tennessee, by his father, Melvin, who had a small business in Memphis. You can imagine, this is a, a black fellow, very proud of the fact that his son, Carlos, was going to school, the, the uh, State University in Tennessee, in Nashville, very, very proud that he had reached that point. Carlos went to the school and became radicalized within the school. They sent him to Yemen. In Yemen, he was further radicalized and he was told that his job was to come back to America and perform an act of jihad so he could prove himself. So he did come back. 
and he tried to kill a rabbi and his family. He wasn't successful with that. But he went to Little Rock, Arkansas. And he went to a recruiting station in Little Rock, Arkansas. And there he found a soldier, an American soldier in uniform, not someone he knew, just somebody walking out of the recruiting station. His name happened to be Andy Long, and he shot him and killed him. The fathers, the fathers of these two boys came together and created a, a testimony in front of the Homeland Security Committee. And Charles Jacobs of Americans for Peace and Tolerance created this DVD, Losing Our Sons. Losing Our Sons. Two boys were lost. One was killed because he was in army uniform. The other is serving a life sentence in prison. He's also lost. So here we have the two fathers. We have Melvin Bledsoe and we have Darius Long. They are crusading to try to get their message told that this is what's going on in America today on our campuses. Our children are being radicalized. They are being misled. They are being told that Islam is this religion of peace. And they are told they are being wooed and embraced and, and misled. And it leads to these tragedies. Now, the boys, this Andy Long who was killed, is entitled also to a Purple Heart because he was killed in action an action against him by terrorists. And the government refuses to recognize it, and they call this a drive-by killing. So you have a drive-by killing, and you have workplace violence, and you have denial, denial, denial. And our people are getting killed, and they, our children are getting brainwashed, and the situation is deteriorated. We know about Arabia. We read the stories of what's going on throughout Europe. And, and we know it's coming here. Now, as, as Robert said, and as this gentleman said, and as Pam keeps saying, and so many others say, we know that, that uh, if we keep speaking about it, we can possibly wake up the American people. But right now, we have a small, very, very dedicated, energetic crowd. But where are the rest of the people? How can we wake them up? What will it take to wake them up? We have to really work at all of this and get this message out because we don't want America to become Islamistan. We do not want to lose our freedoms. We love being Americans. We love enjoying these very special liberties that we have, and we have to work to preserve them. Thank you. Helen, Helen, thank you. I told you you would not disappoint.